Hello everyone, and welcome back to Katala Shoujo. Is this the end? Who knows? This game goes on for over 13 hours. At least it does when I narrate it. I'm your host, Wampa on Roids. As, the cla as class ends, I simply rest my head on my hand and stare out the window to pass time. Last time... Oh, delightful recap. It's been a few days since Lily told me her plans. I haven't been able to... I haven't been to our ordinary lunchtime haunt since then, not that there would be much point. Hanukkah's been busy with the newspaper club she's newly joined and has even begun talking in class with Naomi every now and then. Even Lily, aside from the fact that a meeting between us would have been awkward in any case, has been run off her feet with class representative duties as the summer holidays approach. And now they've just about now they're just about here. With the end of today's spell, the summer holidays will have begun. I suppose that all, all, that all, I suppose that all I'll end up doing will be visiting my parents for the duration and lazing about my old home. Now that my previous plans are entirely askew, meanwhile Akira and Lily will be en route to Scotland to live up out the rest of their lives there. No matter how hard I try to rationalize the idea that once the summer holidays begin, my life will return to the way it was. It simply refuses to happen. Everyone's moving on with their lives. Lily's rejoining her family, Akira's moving up in her father's business, Hanako's gaining new friends and hobbies, and even Yuko's moving ahead with her university aspirations. Even I'm moving forward. In the end, with the marks I've gotten so far in Yamaku, much less... <laughs> After such a rocky beginning, the path to getting into teaching science as a career seems straightforward. I suppose I should be happy at least about that much, but it really doesn't seem to help. He-chan! I quickly stop my ruminating and turn to face the bubbly voice inside of me, putting on the most upbeat expression I can ma muster. As expected, Shizune stands flanking her. I have a sneaking suspicion they want something from me. Hey, Misha. Shizune, what's up? Well, Shichan and I were thinking, since we're two poor little girls that need help with all the homework we've been given just before the holidays began. Sure, I can help. But, Hechan, we were really. Ni what? I think I broke Misha. Even she's an A raises an eyebrow at her accomplice's shuddering stop in her tracks. So you'll help us, He Chan? I just said I would, didn't I? It's hardly like I have anything better to do. Maybe helping them with their work will take my mind off the situation. Misha, Misha seems genuinely ecstatic with my response, but she's an A's expression is almost clouded and difficult to read. I find myself quickly averting my eyes from her own, as it almost looks like her face looks like a face of pity. No doubt, I, it must just be my imagination. After all, Lily and Chizune aren't on speaking terms. Literally? And figuratively. So. This is hardly the first time I've been in the student council room, indeed I've found myself down here often, either to help Lily with class rep work or to sort out one thing or another with the student council itself. Now though, it's quite a different place. Ooh, it's got a laptop! From the 90s? Papers and folders are strewn across every table in the room, only a solitary little black laptop. Oh yeah, that's from the 90s, I think that's a... Uh, I think that, like, right near the keyboard, there's a, uh, a slot to slide my, uh, floppy disk in. No, not that floppy disk, you naughty boys. Papers, oh, uh, black laptop atop a single desk sticking out from the mess. It looks positively ancient, I'd guess it's has been valiantly serving its task and archiving information for years and years. I hope you got a backup. So what needs doing? This looks like a lot to do. Shizune's expression becomes determined as she signs. It's a worrying look. 
Everything, he chan My worry was well placed. Everything, you say? What's left on the desks is what needs to be done. It all needs to be digitally recorded, which is what the laptop is for. And I'm guessing I'll be the one doing this. Shi Chan says she saw y you with the computers in the library a few days ago, and that you seemed really good with them. Good with computers? I can touch type, I guess. But it still seems like an overestimation of my skills. I was just typing up homework. Wait, Shizune was watching me do that? One must know their allies before they can know their enemies, of course. Wow, that's pretty wise. For once, it's not very hard to work out who said what. Nonetheless, it doesn't seem worth fighting over. Sitting at a computer doing some typing hardly seems onerous. As far as tasks to help Shizune and Misha go. Besides, it will help take your mind off things. Oh, they know. Take my mind off things? Take my mind off... what things? Misha's face goes blank as she s translates this for Shizune, though the latter's response is only to glance away towards the window after briefly signing. Misha's face quickly returns to a smile as she translates back. She was confused, I would guess, but Shizune is harder to pin down. I was just thinking you may like to get your mind off exams, of course. Either way, we may as well get to into it rather sooner rather than later. I'll go along with you. That's the spirit, he chan. So yeah, that's why uh, you don't try to keep secrets in high school, because that doesn't work. Even from two people who literally cannot communicate with one another. And that's the fifth spreadsheet compiled and saved. Time for the next months. After a little bit of fussing around, we all managed to get a bit more organized. She's and I's been gathering up the loose sheets and thankfully sorting them into a neat pile next to me. Meanwhile, she's and I's, er, Misha's been handling the manual writing work with her girly pink pen, leaving its unmistakable mark on paper after paper. Once I got myself into a rhythm, this wasn't really isn't wasn't so bad. Shizune and Misha also seem to be in the swing of things, wordlessly communicating as they go about their business with fervor. I periodically glance at the sheets besides beside the laptop, apparently a list of student names and matching addresses as I dutifully enter the data written on it. I don't pay a lot of attention to what I'm typing until I reach about the midway down the page. Hakamichi? Class 3-3? Huh. Her family home is in Saitama. My idle curiosity is ended abruptly as three light taps can be heard rapping on the door. Misha quickly skips over to check who it is, tapping Shizune's shoulder on the way past to let her companion know what's happening. Ah, you're here. Hmm? Who is it? With a slight pause, I'm betting it's Lily. To enter, she's an ace data into the file, along with, with all the others. I look up to check who's at the door. Lily? After giving a cursory nod to Misha and greeting, she perks her head up in her trademark manner. Is that he, Sal? She's pretty darn good at working out my voice from the smallest of phrases nowadays. Yeah, it's me. Um, hey. The atmosphere feels slightly awkward as she bows. Neither of us knows quite how to intim intimate. Intimate? Intimate? We should be around e e each other. Given she's leaving in just a matter of hours. This is a fact, thankfully, neither the oblivious Misha nor the hard-working shoes and I pick up on. So, you've got work to do as well. Unfortunately, I arrived as soon as I could, but my classes held me up with a surprise farewell party, and I had to get changed. I glanced down at the laptop's clock. It's pretty much the end of lunchtime, so I'm guessing Lily managed to wrangle the last period off as well. I take it she's an ace here as well. Of course! And I've been here during all of lunchtime as well.
That last comment was not really needed. Shizune's baiting Lily into another argument. I can feel it. But hey, she's my ex. May as well get this uh, cat fight, you know, started at the end of the game, right? I'm sorry I can't be as hardworking as you, Shizune. I'll endeavor to hire more lackeys to do my work in the future, I assure you. And Lily just took the bait, escalating things further. But aren't you the one always outsourcing work to your classmates? The difference is that they chose to help, unlike your tyrannical grip on your own class. Tyranny works. Even if we did things differently, we still got the same results, right? This is a school, not a police state. You will have to remind me when you were appointed class monarch, I'm afraid. You have to seize power. It's not as good if it's handed to you, but I guess you wouldn't really understand that, right? You'll also have to remind me when monarchs were elected into their positions. Um, I mean, I guess you could say, like, there's a while that, like, certain emperors were, like, elected into their position in, like, Rome, I think? Or was it the Holy Roman Empire? It doesn't matter. But, you know, they, they usually serve till death, right? Lily positively bristles at this. She's an ace two-hit combo, forces her onto defense. Yet, for all your vaunted power, you cannot get one person to help you without forcing him. But he's out volunteered. He's such a hard worker. He's doing this instead of meaningless socialization, right? Is that so, Hisao? Ah, uh, this is bad. I've really ended up between a rock and a hard place. As much as it pains me to do this, the truth has at least a chance of stopping the argument here and now. It's okay, Lily. They didn't harangue me into coming. Or anything. Lily gives me a disapproving grimace, silently radiating her shrunk feelings of displeasure in my general direction. Guess what, bitch? I don't care. I'm my own free man. Let me hang out with these two uh, chicks that aren't gonna just leave me out of the blue. Even if, uh, you know, she's an ace, you know, I can't really talk to her. She can be quite scary when she wants to be, though thankfully that isn't often. He chan you make that sound like it's a regular occurrence. It isn't. In the end, it doesn't matter, so long as everything's getting done at a good pace. Let's just get this work over with so we can go home. She's a nice snorts derisively and gets back to marking off sheets in front of her while Lily sighs and finds her way along the room with her hand follow following the filing cabinets lined up along the wall. This would mark the only time I've managed to successfully defuse one of these situations, but the grudging ceasefire built around the mutual fear and respect makes this feel like the Cold War than any real peace. I can't take all the credit though, Lily's leaving has surely affected Shizune to some extent uh, to make her give up so easily. Moments before getting back to my work, I noticed Lily reaching up to grab something from a filing cabinet. I almost offer to help, but her height gives her an ample ability to take it down safely. Once she sets down the strangely shaped device on the desk, I realize just what it is. Some sort of, uh, as she takes the old green covering off and sits down. Oh, it's a typewriter. Unless it's not a typewriter, that might be a typewriter? At first glance, it seems to be an old metallic blue typewriter. It doesn't take me long to realize it's far from ordinary. It has far fewer keys. Yeah, that's right. And those, it has show no lettering printed on them. Only the shadows cast by the tiny braille dots on them give any hint to the thing's purpose. So it's a typewriter for the blind? Blind typewriter? Oh, this, well... You're not far off. It's called a Perkins Brailler. But it's basically a typewriter for the blind, yes. It presses braille into the page rather than text. Oh, so it only needs like, what, six? Six different dot spaces? Huh, that's really neat. She gives a lighthearted grin at my curiosity over it. I have to admit that it appeals to my sense of novelty. Without further ado, I... We each get uh, back to our allotted 
tasks, the loud clunking of the mechanics and the brailler, and Lily's brailler, and the tapping of the laptop's old and weary keyboard quickly fill the room. It's a nice atmosphere, really. Everyone knows what to do. They have to do, and Lily and I get to sit beside each other and exchange the odd word as we work away. Nostalgic. That's what it feels like. It's pleasant, but slightly stained. With the knowledge that our time is nearing its end. Excuse me, Misha? To properly address her, Misha bounces from the filing cabinet she's peering into. In spite of Lily's lack of sight, for a moment I think it's strange, but then realize it's exactly what I, what I do. What's up? Could you ask Shizune where the attendance records for Class 3-2 are? I think they've been moved. Okie dokie. And with that, she flitters to sh off to Shizune, who's working at a table behind us. Lily's familiarity with the council room and the efficiency with which she works reminds me that she and me that she, Misha, and Shizune used to all work together in the student council. Maybe this is a fitting end for her stay at Yamaku, working away like she used to, surrounded by those she loves and at least liked. I look up, getting taken off guard by Shizune, sorting through a drawer rather than Misha. Surely enough, she plucks out a manila folder, entirely blank, save for the just barely visible bumps on its front, and holds it out in front of Lily. Lily's hand flits over it to check what it is, her fingers feeling the dot dots of braille and confirming that it's exactly what she asked for. Thank you, Misha. No reply. No reply, that is, save for the odd grin, no smile on She's a Nice Face. A couple of seconds pass before Lily clicks that it isn't Misha behind her, but She's a Nice. Her momentary look of surprise is replaced by a slightly bashful smile. For a few moments, the room is all but silent and still. Eventually, though, she's an ace, strides back to her workstation, and Lily begins typing once again. It lasted for only a handful of seconds in all, but it feels like years of communications were made up for in that one silent exchange. There. Finished. I lean my hand, head back, and rub my eyes to try it and work away the weariness. Staring at that small and rather poor screen has taken its toll. Excellent timing. The only thing left to file it left is to file these away, and I'll have my workload finished as well. Uh, good. I can pack up the brailler and put it away while you do that. Thank you, Hisao. Nisha, are you and she's an A far from being done? I look around for the two as I replace the cover on the brailler, only to see them waiting at the door. I guess they must be waiting for us. With a minimum wasted time, we file and pack everything that remains and join them. Thanks for waiting, you two. We couldn't just take off without you, he chan You've been a great help. She's an eight, nods approvingly, pleased with my efforts. I guess this is the last class representative work done and over with then. That's right. I'll miss you, Lily. I think it was fun working with you. Thank you, Misha. It's been good working with you. And Shizune. Shizune thanks for a moment before formulating her response. It's not that she's... Uh, it's, not oft it's not that she often communicates without thinking, quite the opposite, but this time it's even more concerned than considered than usual. Misha looks a little surprised before passing on the message. Shizune says, you'd better do your work over there, better than you did it here. Far from taking offense, Lily giggles into her hand. <laughs> if that's the case, then please tell Shizune to give those still here a little more understanding in the future. Competitive until the last, maybe Shizune and Lily aren't so different after all. Shi-chan? That... Shi-chan says that she'll be checking to make sure you live up to your end of the promise. Then that's how it'll be. I'd better be off. Goodbye, Shizune. Goodbye, Misha. Hisao.
Lily takes a hold of my arm in hers, there being no need for a cane if I am here to guide her. With a nod of farewell to the two, we set off out the door and make our way to the school grounds. As I wave goodbye to them, I notice she's and A's lingering gaze lingering on Lily. They may annoy each other, but family bonds aren't easily broken. Got all your papers sorted then? Yes, they've all been filed filled out and handed in. On top of things as always, aren't ya? Except for when you try to break my heart. <laughs> she gives an earnest smile at that compliment but it feels as if her happiness is just a veneer over the fact that she's fully aware of how much she's leaving behind. It reminds me of how she was like when I first met her, always smiling, always that little bit aloof, always that little distance away from everyone. Even now, she still maintains that air among others, many others especially those she's not close to, and I had hoped that our time together would have changed that fact. The pace slows, the two of us coming to a halt, in the all but empty school gardens. He saw, is something the... Lily's words are cut short as I turn and wrap my arms around her, pulling her tight. I may not usually given, may not be usually given to such impulsive actions, but I just want to be close to her, even if it's the last time I'll be able to. All the other students have returned, retreated to their dormitories and homes. Only the rufflings of leaves and the breeze make any sound whatsoever. As I draw back, I can see she's dropped her carefully maintained smile. Her hand hesitates, wanting to neither leave nor to stay on my features. She's putting on a brave show, but her slightly trembling gives it away. Lily may be able to control herself well, but even she can't hold her composure together now. This is the woman I have come to love, but also the one who in all too short a time will leave the country forever. I I'm sorry, Hisao. That's okay. You've got your own life to lead, after all. We walk up the hallway in the girls' dormitory, hand in hand. Our emotions by now largely quelled, nevertheless our hands grip each other much more tightly than before. Faint, muffled voices can be heard from Lily's room, the origins of which aren't difficult to guess. The moment she opens the door, Hanako bursts through and wraps her arms around Lily, taking her very obviously by surprise. Do you leave your door unlocked, Lily, or does Hanako have a key? One of which is very disturbing. Lily, Lily. Ha Hanako? I'm going to miss you, Lily. As expected, she's on the verge of tears. Lily gently rubs Hanako's hair with her hand in response, then pulls back and gives a warm, reassuring smile. Looking beyond Hanako, Akira can be seen from the side of Lily's bed, scratching her head. Her eyes from turn from Lily to Hanako to me. Weak smile hanging on her face, try to return a more genuinely happy look, but the result is probably just the same. So, everything set? Managed to hold back from killing Shizune? The comment draws an amused giggle <laughs> from her sister. Yes, I have everything in order, and yes, I managed not to. Have you packed everything you need? Got the two bags right here. There's still some stuff left at Hakimichi's home. I can pick that up while we wait there for tomorrow's evening flight, though. Akira gives two large traveling bags on the floor a hearty pat. She probably came to help pack and make sure everything was in order on Lily's end before going together with her. Lily, will you be okay over there? I'll be alright, I assure you. I'll have Akira looking after me as well, and you know that she's reliable. But... Don't worry, Hanako, I have your phone number after all, so we can stay in touch with Akira's help. I could send you things over the internet as well. 
Hey, don't use me just because you want to learn how to use a computer. Hanako and Lily both giggled briefly. <laughs> the mood lightning ever so little. That goes for you too, though, he sal. I promise I'll contact you once I'm in Scotland. Why? Doesn't matter. I know. I'll be looking forward to it, I mean. <sighs> Her offer may be kind, but we both know this is tantamount to breaking up. Neither of us has any illusions as to how well we'd manage a long-distance relationship. With nary a word of prompting, the four of us begin the long, solemn walk to the school gate. The numerous lamps scattered around Yamaku grounds failed to do much more than provide pinpoints of light in an otherwise dense darkness. A park of the a part a car parked on the road just outside the school grounds comes into view, its shining black exterior reflecting the dimly lit lamps of Yamaku. I call out to Akira in an effort to alleviate a bit of heavy atmosphere. That your car? What kind is it? Don't know much about cars, do ya? It's a Lancer Evo, solid and speedy. Well, it's not as if her comment to my, on my knowledge is off the mark. I've never really taken an, inter an interest in them. Not that I've ever heard of an Evo either, or a Lancer. Um, she gives a small sigh. She's been good. Pity I have to part with it tomorrow. Just like the summer house. You guys were the last to visit it before it changed hands. Turning from my rather faulty attempt at small talk, I glance at Hanako and Lily following behind us. By rights, Hanako should be leading Lily, but it's definitely the other way around as she clings tightly to Lily's arm. It's a depressing sight. So, I guess this is it. Indeed. Although the time for everyone to say their farewells is now, but nobody really wants to take their first step. It's as if nobody, as the longer nobody speaks, the better chances of them simply not leaving. Lily, do you really have to go? I'm sorry, Hanako. I won't be leaving you forever, though. I can still call you. He self will still be here as well. Yeah. I. It's good to know that I'm a constellation prize. I nod, but Hanako just clutches all the tighter to Lily's arm. After spending so long with anyone to call family, it must be excruciating to have to say to goodbye to the one person that was as close to as a mother as anyone could have been in her life. Hanako lets out a long, sad breath. All Akira and I can really do is stand by and quietly, quietly on the sidelines since the only person that can solve this would be Lily herself. Eventually, Lily puts her arm from, pulls her arm from Hanako's grip and holds both of her shoulders gently. A much more decisive way of address than I've ever seen Lily take with her. Hanako, remember when we first met? When you entered my room for the first time, I, after overhearing and my consoling of a friend, you didn't say a single word for the entire night. Even as I poured you tea and talked, you sat silently and simply listened to what I said. It took many quiet things like that before you began to open up to me. But as you began to, I felt some of the happiest moments I've ever felt. I didn't become your friend because I pitied you, Hanako. I became your friend because I knew you were hiding not just from me, but from everyone. Your ambitions, your personality, interests, tastes, I didn't know any of them and neither did anyone else. As you showed yourself to me, though, I began to realize the person that you were and became, that our, became sure that our meeting was a special moment. But I... Lily cuts her words short as she brings her hand to Hanako's head and brushes her fringe to the side, gently pressing her lips to Hanako's forehead. 
As she pulls her head back, leaving Hanako all but speechless and her eyes moist, Lily beams a wide smile. I believe you are a very beautiful person, Hanako, and I am certain that you will become a strong and confident woman. You are a very dear friend and someone whom I love very much. Just like he, Sal, I will never forget you for as long as I live. I may be leaving, but you have your own life to lead, just as I do. You have your own friends and hobbies and your own hopes after graduations. I want you to devote yourself to them, even after I'm not around anymore. That is why I think you'll be okay, because you are your own self, with your own life. You yourself proved that to me. Hanako lowers her head in embarrassment, but nods if she does. So, I, I understand. I know I have to say goodbye. I know you have to go your own way. But thank you, Lily, for everything. Thank you, Hanako. Will you be okay? There are a few seconds of silence before the answer comes. I will. Lily smiles undoubtedly at the last, at least partly in belief. That makes me very happy then. Goodbye. Goodbye, Lily. And farewell to you as, farewell to you as well, Hisao. Goodbye. I'll miss you. She pauses for a moment, walking up to me, her hand outstretched in her front of her. Takes hold of my shoulder, her left hand, and daintily reaches forward to my face, taking my cheek in her palm. For a while, she simply holds my face, her fingers just slightly moving to take it in its contours. Usually her hand would be warm when doing such a thing. But the night air has given her skin a cool edge. I'm not sure how long we'll stay like this, her clouded eyes pointed just below my own, as she wears a wistful, almost distant smile. <sighs> Eventually, though, I take her cold hand in mine. It's difficult to do so, but with a smile, with a slight sigh, I <sighs> gently remove her hand from my cheek. I hope you live a long and happy life, Lily, no matter where you might go. Thank you. I'll make sure to. She takes a long, trembling breath before returning towards Akira's direction. Akira? Okay. With a slight nod, she takes Lily's hand and begins to guide her to the parking lot outside the gates. They both walk slowly and deliberately as if their movements have been rehearsed in advance. It's strange to feel like this now, watching someone leave Yamaku. The feeling of unease I have reminds me of the first time I walked through those black wrought iron gates. That always looked far too pompous that for what they were. As they leave, all of us know full well that our lives are re irreversibly changing. I had always told myself I, that I'd just take life as it comes. But everything's changing so fast, so suddenly. At the end, Lily's an irreplaceable part of both Hanuk of the lives of both Hanako and I. The noise of Akira opening this passenger door for Lily brings out brings me out of my thoughts, her hand wavering as Lily gets in. See you guys. Take care of yourselves. Goodbye, Hanako. Goodbye, Hisao. Hanako's hand quickly shoots up, her face bright face brightened by her enthusiastic farewell. Goodbye, Lily. Goodbye. See you, Kira. Goodbye, Lily. The door shuts as we all put on our happiest farewell faces. Akira is getting in the car herself and starting up in short measure. Lily's hand can just be seen waving through the tinted windows, both of our hands waving high as well. Just as every other time I've done such things, I can't work out why I or Hanako wave to her given the fact she can't see us doing so, but it doesn't matter. Even after that black shiny car goes down the hill and disappears into the dark night, we appear, we carry on waving and seeing Akira and Lily off, and then they're gone. A strange stillness takes over. 
as our hands return to our sides. I don't know what I should do or how I should feel. In the end, we just stand there, silently, staring down at where the cat car disappeared from sight. Goodbye, Lily. All I can do in response to her quiet, mournful goodbye is to place a hand on her shoulder. She looks at me for a few moments before looking back down the hill, securing the knowledge that I'm still around for her. What we'll do now doesn't seem all that uncertain. We all have our own ambitions, just as Lily said. But even so, it feels like there's a certain part missing from both of our lives now. Something that can never be replaced. Snap of my mobile phone closing con trust the, with the ambient chatter and noise audible even in the hallway outside the library. It's the first day of summer holiday, a time that had been per that had perpetually seemed so far away and yet it's now not only here but also made painfully obvious by the students or lack thereof left in the school. Most students have returned home to spend the holidays with their relatives by now. The few that are still left are chatting between themselves, usually about what they intend to do in the coming weeks. It makes me feel like the odd one out for taking advantage of the school library being open for the first several days of the holiday. The barking can be heard in the outside by the seeing eye dogs. And the gulps of coffee can be heard by the blind. Ostensibly, it's for the students to drop off any books they've borrowed and have yet to return. And for those who will have par their parents pick them up to help pass the time until they're whisk they get whisked away. Thanks to the recent lengthy phone call from my parents, which had so rudely awoken me from my sleeping on a beanbag at the back to the library, I'm now in the latter category. Sliding my phone in back into my pocket, this time remembering to set it to silent, I go back to, into a quiet and wholly placid room. It's a nostalgic sight, just as when Lily first led me to the library, the orange tint of the sunset bathes. The room, in its light, while Hanako sits on a beanbag silently reading, and Yuko fusses just barely visible behind the counter. <clears throat> Hanako especially has been noticeably more quiet than usual since yesterday's happenings, but I can't really blame her. It wasn't me that, that depended on that person after all. I quietly walked back to the beanbag near her where I'd sat before, being doubly careful not to make any unnecessary noise. The soft puff it gives as the bag Takes my weight, makes Hanako's eyes flick towards me, but only for a second. I get the feeling that Hanako's been quiet, only partly out of sadness following Lily's departure. Rather, she seems more thoughtful and measured than I expected, perhaps due to her desire of working out how to feel, how to deal with Lily's leaving rather than just being depressed over it. Makes me a little proud of her. Hey, Hanako. He, yeah. Still going ahead with your idea of traveling? She gives a determined nod. I'll be starting in a day or two. Naomi's decided to come with me too. Wow, quick start. Where are you two heading first? I think we're going to start by heading north, then loop down and go southward. So Hokkaido's going to be the first. She gives another nod, more tentative than the last. The significance of that place is not lost on either of us. Do you know how you're going to handle uh, traveling expenses and accommodations? Yeah, I've worked out. I've worked everything out. It, I think it should be okay. Naomi says she's she has her side worked out too. You know that if you need anything, to, you can just call, right? I gave you my number before. Any time of the day is fine, except for 3 p.m. or th except for 3 a.m. I'm asleep then. She gives a smile, which in itself feels like a small personal victory. I know. So thanks, Hisao. Maybe Lily was right. 
although I may offer Hanako any help I can possibly give, I feel as if I know she doesn't need it. She really has grown. Hanako's plans for the holiday are in sharp contrast to my simple following of my parents' suggestion to stay with them. Holidays had always made me feel less excited than most, so, though, so maybe this is just a return to the status quo. Before my heart attack, I always... I'd always lived so aimlessly that holidays weren't all that d much different from everyday life anyway. After school, I'd wander around a bit in the city, often hanging out with the some friends before making my way home to eat dinner with usually one of my parents, but rarely both. The work schedules didn't leave much time to, for them to be home, and they're going there straight from school would just have meant I'd end up feeling bored. I was an urbanite through and through. Since coming to Yamiko, though, it feels like I've fundamentally changed as a person. The phone call with my parents erased any traces of doubt I might have held on that in any case. While before I had exercised a fairly normal level of independence for a teenager, that being not a whole lot, my parents were more pleased more, more than pleased to hear of my newfound ability to, in taking care of myself, laundry, cooking for myself, cleaning, all in addition to other general chores that come from living without my parents around, just little menial things I've had to pick up with relative ease. When I think about it, I'd always depended on them, even if they hadn't been at home all the time. To say I never depended on anyone after moving to Yamaku dor dormitories would be far from the truth, though. Um, excuse me? The two of us look up at the awkwardly fidgeting figure in front of us. Some things never change. It's getting close to closing time, so, um... Oh, right, I've forgotten the library closes earlier during the holidays. Hanako and I both get up and dust ourselves off, placing our books on the shelf behind us, the fact that our tastes and reading material have a fair amount of overlap is useful at times. With a book, with a bow to Yuko to apologize for taking so much time, Hanako takes leave of us. See you tomorrow, Hisao. Bye. And with that, she walks out of the large wooden aging doors that herald the entrance to the library. She's quite a person, isn't she? I suppose I should be surprised at the staff members sharing personal opinions like this, but after knowing Yuko for a while, it's largely expected. Our relationship is more personal than, rather than one with her acting as an authority figure. Yeah, I think that's just how she is. She's got a lot more confidence in herself these days, though. I don't know her as well as you do, but I think I agree. I think I did double Yuko there. Oops. It's nice to see her taking to people here. She never used to do that before. Hey, Yuko. You know about Lily's leaving, right? Let me just check really quickly. Courtesy and false. How many bloody scenes are in this thing? She told me a few days ago it must be hard leaving everybody behind like she is. She quickly looks back to me after she says this, probably remembering that I went to her for advice on the relationship between L Lily and I before. Are, are you going to be okay? That's a difficult question. I It's something I'd rather not think about for now, given more pressing issues. Bark, bark, bark. Something seems kind of off about the whole deal, you know? Don't you think? Yuko appears to think for a while, absent-mindedly scrunching her face up in a variety of creative ways as she does so. I don't think I really know her well enough to make that kind of judgment. I'm sorry I can't be more of a help. Nah, that's fine. I'm just sort of thinking aloud. <sighs> I give a deep sigh and scratch my head in frustration. There's just so much stuff happening at once that I have no control over. It feels like I'm being swamped. I think everybody goes through times like that. What's important is to concentrate on what you think rather than what you can't do. 
or what you can do as opposed to what you can't do at least that's how I see it if I didn't think like that I don't think I'd be able to manage my life as it is she says with a she says it with a smile and a light tone but her words are far from any kind of joke being pulled from between two jobs as she is just to to hopefully not make enough money not to only to live but also for university must be exhausting Perhaps that's why, coming from her, this feels like it has more meaning than if it had come from most others. I guess you have a point there. Thank you for your advice once again, Yuko. She bows deeply and smiles before making her way back to the counter where she depends, where she spends so much of her time. The tiny wings of cardboard cr of the cardboard crane in my fingers are only just visible through the dim light of my room. Just a little of the moonlight being able to be to peek through my curtains and through the edges. I lie still in my dark bed for a long time, idly looking up at the little origami bird. It feels as though it feels like it it's a lot or it feels like a lot's happened since Lily folded this. But once but at once but at the same time, it feels like very little has changed compared to the compared to everyone else. I'm back to square one. I might have found a new idea of where I want to go in life, but that's something hardly. But that's hardly something that affects me now. Hanako changed. I know that much. If anything, she just makes me feel like I've got no excuse to be like this, considering her previous situation. Lily, though. Turn the burden, the bird in my fingers another way, looking at it from yet another angle. When I first met her, she seemed aloof and perhaps somewhat distant. Her actions were always careful, measured, and precise, and her carefully maintained composure always gave the com appearance of unerring confidence and serenity. In time, she became less formal, just a bit, but enough. It felt good to see her. Lowering her inhibitions around me and opening up even just a little of her own accord It felt as if I was seeing her real self Slowly become more vibrant and visible Now though I'm beginning to have doubts Perhaps they're to be expected after what is effectively the two of us breaking up They don't feel new or strange, but rather like an old book found and dusted off. I soon realized that after meeting Lily, she simply saw me as she saw as she did Hanako, as someone who needed help and care at first. I simply thought we'd be fine as friends, helping each other through our limited time together in school, but then I began to treasure our moments more and more. From our quiet walks to our talking over lunch. The good sides of her personality became ever so more obvious and ever more likable. The absence of Lily's caused by Lily's trip to Scotland to visit her long distance family and sick aunt only made me realize how much I like being around her and I th thought she felt a similar way. For her though, maybe that wasn't everything to our relationship. Even after she returned to Japan, that just meant that she'd lost her family again after meeting them for such a brief time. She lived f so much of her life without her family around, not to mention with Akira working long hours that she had little choice to, but to be like that. I had thought her sense of independence to be a good, admirable trait. It was in stark difference to my reliance on my parents before my heart attack, as reluctant as I may have been to admit it. However, it also meant that she never let people get too close to her. She lost her family, likely due to her blindness, went to a different school from anybody she knew because of it, and, all the hard and worked all the harder to make sure she didn't end up a burden on her sister and those around her. And now Akira's going to Inverness. Just like the family she thought she'd lost. She never told me of her plans, as conflicted as she was about them. Lily never wanted to be a burden on anyone, including me. I'm an idiot. I never questioned it. 
I never tried to be there or asked when she needed me to. I just sat my life up and expected it to stay that way forever, the two of us having a nice long relationship where we push forward our future together. Forward towards our future together. A small pit of frustration and anger at myself wells up in my chest. I just let everything happen. Never even trying to help Lily. Just trying... Just her being there was enough. I thought I could keep on giving her... Going if that were true. But that could never have been enough. It was a childlike dependence on someone. Without any attempt to understand or help their situation. Thanks to that... I lost Lily. I lost the one person I loved the most. I wasn't there for her when she needed me. With an increasingly f angry f feeling washing over me, I turn over and set the crane back on my desk to the next to the alarm clock. The place where it has lived ever since the day she folded it for me. Since that day she herself said that my burdens needn't be my own. The obnoxious bright red numerals of my alarm clock through the darkness of the room onto my tired eyes. Ten o'clock. Evening. Curfew will be soon. I wonder. Kira mentioned they'd be leaving this evening. I have no idea exactly when their flight is, but that means there's a chance, however small, that they might not have left or might not have already left. Adrenaline starts to move through my body as I sit up on my bed. My eyes suddenly wide with the possibility. There's no guarantee they haven't left. Indeed, it's likely that they already have, but there's no chance there's also a chance, however small, it might it may be. Just this once, just as I should have before. I stand up and rush over to my cabinet, throwing out some clothes as fast as I can, and sliding them on in quick succession. Each second that goes by is a second I can't regain, a second that may mean the difference between catching them and losing them forever. Even if I fail, I have to try. I can't leave her. Let her leave everything behind without trying to stop her. Without just this once being there for her. And guys, we're at 52 minutes. I don't know how long this is going to take. I mean, I've thought for the last three or four episodes that this was going to be ending any time now. But, remember guys, stay safe. Do something stupid for love. And have fun. One of those things is more important than the others, guys. Bye.